We're in Scotland, Glasgow. Scotland, Glasgow. Yesterday was a very, very beautiful sunny day. Today it's raining. Yeah. It's more like misting. It's Portland, Oregon weather actually. Yeah, it's misty. So, it's, it's very green and beautiful. This. And there's a lot of things to do in Glasgow that we just, we didn't expect. Yeah. They have a nice museum here. They do. They have a bunch of stuffed full-size animals, including elephants, giraffes. And the uh, Egypt uh, mummy. Mummy. Yeah, Egyptian mummies. Egyptian mummy. No daddies though. I don't know why. I don't know why. Maybe you can go to uh, sponsor yourself after Egypt some daddy. That's a really good idea. Maybe <laughs> after I'm dead. How's that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it's kind of sexist though, having all mummies like that. <laughs> so, I don't know. I heard Glasgow is supposed to be all... We're not sexist. We're not racist. But there they are. The only mummies. <laughs> This is Dan of Vagabond Buddha. I'm going to show you videos and pictures of Glasgow, Scotland, as I discuss why it may be a good place to retire for some people. But don't write anything down as you listen. Everything I say is in writing at Vagabond Buddha with Google Map links to everything I talk about. Just click the link in the notes below this YouTube video to get Retire in Glasgow, Glasgow, free Old Town walking tour, Glasgow day tours, best restaurants, nightlife, uh, best and cheap hotels, Glasgow live livability factors, and Glasgow uh, cost of living. Plus, you'll find the best travel or retired cheap in paradise locations in the world, not just Scotland. Um, so, retire in Glasgow. Again, this is Dan from Vagabond Buddha. This is my Retire in Glasgow guide. If you're following Vagabond Buddha, you probably haven't thought about retiring in Glasgow, Scotland. I usually take you to warmer climates where your dollar, pound, or euro goes a long way. But this week I'm in Glasgow visiting my little sister, so I thought I would share the experience and the cost of living with you. As you know, I've been traveling the world since 2007. I've been to 65 countries so far in my life. My sister left the U.S. about 10 years ago um, before I did. Um, she left in about 1998. She started in London and moved to Glasgow uh, about a year ago. So I'm gathering data about the cost of living here in case you are curious about living or retiring in Scotland. My sister and I grew up in California, mostly near Silicon Valley, but also the Central Valley where all the uh, crops are grown. We both just love to travel and see the world. So I try to visit her every few years whenever I'm passing through uh, Europe. I'll try to s pop over to the UK and visit her. I'm cataloging the best retired cheap in paradise locations in the world. I just finished a tour of the best 18 places to retire early for cheap in Mexico. Uh, just click the link below this YouTube video to get my top 10 places to live cheap or retire early in Mexico for cultural explorers, um, adventure types, and for rural self-reliance types. All the links are on the webpage uh, that, that you'll find by clicking the link below this YouTube video. Plus, subscribe to Vagabond Buddha or at our Vagabond Buddha YouTube channel if you'd like to learn about the cost of living or retiring all over the world. Chung Hoi of Hobo Ventures has been discovering the world with me on this trip for the last 12 months. She joined me one year ago. One year ago. Uh, there's a link to her Instagram account. You should follow her. She's a lot of fun to watch. If you would like to learn how to live and earn money internationally in the new digital economy, possibly with less money than you spend at home, please grab a free copy of my ebook or subscribe to Vagabond Buddha. Okay, Glasgow facts. Here are some interesting facts uh, about Glasgow. I'm here now as I type these words. It's beautiful, clean, and ancient, as you may imagine. 
Click on the blue Google map to zoom into Glasgow. Again, all these links are at the link below this YouTube video. Uh, Glasgow is the largest city in Scotland with 621,000 people and the largest seaport in the, U in the UK. Uh, the wider metropolitan area is home to about 1.8 million people or 33% of the Scottish population. Um, the islands of Great Britain trace their names all the way back to the 4th century BC. Both the Greeks and Romans had knowledge and a presence in what is now known as the UK. The Greek explorer Pythias referred to the islands as Britannia. Caesar himself spent time on the islands and even kidnapped uh, a king's son and took him back to, uh, to Rome to educate him in 54 BC. The Romans conquered what was then called Britannia in 43 AD. The Romans were unable to conquer what is now Scotland, so they built Hadrian's Wall to keep the Scottish out of Britannia. Uh, Hadrian's Wall is the largest Roman artifact anywhere in the world. It runs 73 miles, and a significant portion of the wall still stands and has been a UNESCO World Heritage since 1687. In this, forgive me, 1987. Uh, in the second century AD, uh, conquered Roman Britannia was personified as a goddess with Corinthian helmet, trident, and, and shield, with an African male lion at her side. Britannia, or Britain, still today evokes the national identity of the islands, and the Roman goddess remains on British coins. Glasgow was founded in the 6th century by St. Mungo, who built a church where the present Glasgow Cathedral stands. The first bridge over the Clyde was built in 1285, and the University of Glasgow was established in the 15th century. Glasgow's fortunes grew rapidly with international trade, invention, and manufacturing in the 17th century with the products of the Atlantic Triangle, uh, triangular slave trade. At the time of the Union of Scotland and England in 1707, although England had 30 times more wealth than Scotland, there were four Scottish universities, St. Andrews, Glasgow, Aberdeen, and Edinburgh, against two in England. This virtually assured the Scottish Enlightenment in the 18th century. During the Industrial Revolution, the population and economy of Glasgow grew into one of the world's preeminent leaders, especially in shipbuilding. Uh, Glasgow suffered a post-World War I recession and the Great Depression, which led to the rise in radical socialism of the Red Clydesdale movement. But by World War II, was in an economic rebound that lasted until the 1950s. Since the 1980s, Glasgow city planners have engineered an economic renaissance that has resulted in the Lonely Planet naming Glasgow one of the world's top 10 tourist destinations in 2008. In 2008, Glasgow was ranked 43rd of the top 50 safest cities in the world to live. Okay, Glasgow free Old Town walking tour. There is a interactive Google map uh, that you can click and it will take you on a walking tour of my favorite uh, 12 significant historical places in Glasgow. Um, I'm not going to take you through that now, but if you come to the web page, there's a video you can watch and uh, of the walking tour. And if it looks interesting, you can click the free map and take the tour yourself or just enjoy the video. Okay, let's see. Um, Glasgow uh, day tours. If you book my recommended flights, tours, or accommodations, you'll pay nothing extra, but will earn a small commission. That's how we uh, continue to pay uh, for uh, parts of our travel. Okay, guided tours. 
uh, Best Glasgow Day Tours, Viator Tours. There's a link here you can click where there's 24 trips originating from Glasgow, and then I've picked three favorites for you to consider. And then I've given you a link to a second tour company uh, that um, you can check that has 40 tours from Glasgow. Um, and then I've given three uh, example tours that you could check out for that tour company. Um, if you're an adventurous sort, I'd recommend trying one of my self-guided or cheap bastard tours. You should try one of my tours. Um, on the webpage, there's a Loch Lomond $7 boat tour from Glasgow. Just jump in a car and drive to the dock uh, under uh, a bridge, Google link provided, and jump on Sweeney's Cruise uh, th of Loch Lomond. Uh, buy a five pound round trip ticket, which today is about $7 US for a tour of Loch Lomond by boat. After the boat trip, which lasts about one and a half hours, head north towards the highlands, turn around and head back to Glasgow when it starts to get dark. I provided a video of the boat tour and the driving tour in 10x speed so you can get an idea of what the tour looks like and if it looks fun, go for it. Um, if you'd like to learn the various ways that people make money online or how to live internationally, possibly with less money than you spend at home, please subscribe to Vagabond Buddha or get a free copy of my ebook, and I'll keep you updated whenever I discuss those topics. Okay, Glasgow Best Restaurants, Street Food, and Surprise Experiences. Uh, we're visiting my sister in Glasgow and eating at a home with her mostly. Her partner Chris and I have been trading off cooking, plus my sister has made some amazing comfort foods like vegetarian hamburgers and hot dogs, but we've snuck out to eat a few meals also in places that we really enjoyed, so we'd recommend to you. Just click the link below the video, come to the webpage, and there's three recommendations. On our walking tour, we had a really nice pizza at Express Pizza. Express Pizza uh, about a block and a half from George Square, which is on the walking tour. Uh, we also, uh, we also uh, had lunch one day at Brew Dog. We had a, I, I had a great veggie burger at Brew Dog. And then at Hillhead Book Club, my sister and I had great vegetarian sloppy joes at this place. I ate meat when I was a kid, and I haven't had a sloppy joe since, which is a beef product in the U.S., um, but they had a vegetarian version of it. This was a nice surprise. Chung Khoi really enjoyed her pork grill. It was just a starter, but she said it was big enough. Okay, best nightlife in Glasgow, uh, bar hopping, walking tour, and map. We didn't sample the nightlife while we were in Glasgow, but my sister is like me, usually. She never seems to grow up. She said that the two areas that you should investigate if you are young at heart or young in fact are the Dumbarton uh, Road in Pat Patrick uh, for 30-somethings and the Finiston at Argyle Street for 20-somethings. There's a Google map here with the areas circled. Just click it and go. Okay, Glasgow, best and cheap hotels. Um, I usually recommend staying the Old Town area. That still tr holds true here, but there's also a bunch of other areas that are great in Glasgow. The whole place is relatively safe and beautiful, but I will start you out with some great choices. But once you're on the ground uh, in Glasgow, you'll have a better feel for the price, quality, neighborhood choices that suit you best. After following us for four months in Mexico, and before that, in Southeast Asia, brace yourself. You may feel a little sticker shock. I'll start with expensive and work my way down to cheap and then recommend a hostel even. Finally, I'll show you an Airbnb where we uh, would stay if we didn't have a free ride at my sister's house while we're in Glasgow. Just click the link, come to the webpage, look for our Glasgow Best and Cheap Hotels. Okay, Glasgow livability factors. This is Dan from Vagabond Buddha. 
Here are the factors I use to decide if I would want to live somewhere. I call them my livability factors. Uh, food choices, walkability, internet reliability, social considerations, cost of living, things to do, real estate prices, weather, and expat mingling opportunities. Okay, Glasgow, uh, my desirability retirement score. Because of the cool winters and the high cost of living relative to Latin America, Eastern Europe, uh, or Southeast Asia, Glasgow would not rate in high in places to live for me. But it did rate very high for my little sister. She sold her flat in London and moved to Glasgow about a year ago. Because of the differences in costs of living as compared to London, she was able to get her house in Glasgow without a mortgage and still has money left over to buy one or two rental properties. She doesn't like hot weather and feels generally more comfortable in the UK than the warm, sunny places that I love. That's the beauty of choice. Just figure out what you love and go after it. Okay, Glasgow walkability, hi. There's several neighborhoods in Glasgow, several neighborhoods in Glasgow that you could live where all of your needs will be within 20 minutes of walking. You will not need a car. You could even walk between most of the interesting neighborhoods without a car. There's also great public transportation here if it's too cold to walk uh, in the winter. Okay, internet reliability, very high. The Wi-Fi at my sister's house in Glasgow was an order of magnitude faster 10 times than anything I experienced in Mexico or Southeast Asia. Okay, food, hi. The food diversity is extreme here. It is like Mexico City, Bangkok. It's almost as good as New York or London. Um, if you're enjoying this video, could you please like it? share on social media, comment below, or subscribe. Uh, your interaction will rank us higher in search engines, and we thank you in advance. Okay, weather. Uh, I would say low. July is the warmest month with an average high of 68 Fahrenheit or 20 Celsius. And it cools down at night to 54 Fahrenheit or 12 Celsius. This means your house almost never needs AC, a big savings. December is the coldest month with an average low of 35 Fahrenheit or 2 Celsius at night. And it only warms up to about 44 Fahrenheit or 7 Celsius in the day. So you'll be paying for heat in the winter. The rainy season is September through March when it rains 4 to 6 inches per month or 112 to 150 millimeters per month. Because the average low for the day is 50 Fahrenheit, 10 Celsius for eight months of the year, I'm labeling Glasgow as, a lo as low for weather. But this could be labeled medium instead of low for you if you are allergic to heat. Okay, things to do. Um, I would say, hi, Glasgow is a modern city surrounded by some of the most beautiful green mountains, lakes, and oceans, uh, vistas in the world. So you have a modern uh, city with everything and nature all around you. So that's high. Social considerations, hi, the Scots are lovely people and are a joy to be around. Uh, there are also foreigners and expats of all colors shapes and sizes and religions. There are amazing university with all the diversity of food and culture that that implies. And many stay after they graduate and open businesses and restaurants. So it's a very uh, diverse, interesting culture uh, here in Scotland, especially Glasgow. Okay, expat penetration, hi. Mostly it attracts students from all over the world that attend the world-class universities here. But it's also a socially liberal society that attracts and makes people feel welcome. Okay, real estate. I would say medium. The prices have been creeping up here over the last few decades. 
homes start at around 200,000 pounds, but you could spend double or triple that for the close-in nice neighborhoods. There are still one-bedroom apartments in the 50 to 100, 150 pound range. I do not recommend buying until you've lived here for at least one or two years. Okay, Glasgow, cost of living. The rents for a close-in one-bedroom apartment could easily run you a thousand pounds per month, including utilities. An Airbnb apartment with a per month rental discount uh, would still run around 1200 pounds per month. Once you're here, you could negotiate a better deal. Okay, so cost of living, uh, and this is for someone who is looking for somewhere cheap to live, and so they are frugal in nature. Uh, it would run uh, over a range uh, somewhere between about uh, a thousand uh, for a, a uh, temporary backpacker visitor type, a thousand dollars per month, uh, all the way up to about twenty three twenty four twenty five hundred a month for someone renting a one bedroom apartment and who likes to go out and eat quite a bit at restaurants uh, there's a monthly cost of living table at the web page you can see uh, how these numbers uh, add up and there's also a link you can click if you want to learn more about the cost of living table okay the above table is just my notes from my time here the above numbers are for one person and do not include alcohol, tours, or extras. I do not guarantee these prices for anyone. For more information, there's a link here uh, at, on the Vagabond Buddha webpage that explains how the table works. Please subscribe here on Vagabond Buddha or on our YouTube channel if you'd like to receive the cost of living estimates uh, for each place that we go around the world. Um, you can also look at our posts of the previous country we visited. Please book using the links to my recommended flights, uh, tours, and accommodation. You'll pay nothing extra, but we'll earn a small commission. That will allow us to keep making these travel guides and videos for you. Thanks for watching our video. If you'd like to learn how to live internationally, or make money online, please subscribe. Contact us if you'd like to collaborate with us on social media. This is Dan of Vagabond Buddha. Thank you for stopping by. The world is your home. What time will you be home for dinner? Dan here, Vagabond Buddha. You're sad about something? <laughs> We're in Dusseldorf, Germany. Uh -huh. We just left Scotland. Yes, and we got a best deal for the wine in Scotland. Yeah, our, we're going to stay with friends in Budapest. For at least two weeks. Yeah, and Chung Hoi said we have to get them some wine. So we found a good deal on some wine. And right now we're in duty free in Dusseldorf. We have another hour of layover. See, all these whiskeys and wines, but we got a really good deal in Scotland, Glasgow.